Hi, welcome to this month's training webisode. Today we're going to talk about a very simple procedure but often overlooked and that's C-spine immobilization. We're going to talk about indications on when you would C-spine immobilize somebody and maybe some incidences where you would not. We're also going to discuss a very simple procedure called the standing takedown method. There's two basic type techniques for this procedure, one involving three rescuers and another involving two. The technique you use is going to be determined obviously on how many rescues you have on the scene. We're also going to hear from our safety officer on how to properly immobilize a backboarded patient to our stretcher. So let's look at some indications for when to immobilize somebody. According to our protocol, C-spine immobilization is indicated for patients that have altered mental status, any serious multi-system trauma, any patient complaining of neck pain secondary to a significant mechanism of injury. Things like spiderweb windshield, deformed dash, a rollover, passenger space intrusion of more than 12 inches. These patients should be immobilized. Any mechanism that produces a violent impact to the head, neck, chest, or torso, or pelvis, patients should be boarded. Incidents producing sudden acceleration or deceleration or lateral bending forces to the head, neck, or torso. An example would be a high-speed MVC, pedestrian struck by auto, or any kind of involvement in an explosion. Any patient ejected or falls from a moving vehicle or any kind of human power transport device, i.e. a scooter, skateboard, should be immobilized. Major injury that may distract the patient's awareness to neck or back pain, such as pelvic fracture, femur fracture, extensive burns, these patients should be aborted. Any evidence of drug or alcohol ingestion, a patient should be immobilized. Any pain upon palpation to any part of the cervical spine. Neck pain to patient's range of motion. Inability to communicate either through speech or hearing impairment, foreign language, small children, they should be immobilized. Any fall that is three times the height of the patient indicates spinal immobilization. A victim from shallow water diving incident should be immobilized. Good point to remember, whenever in doubt, immobilize. Some indications when a patient may not need to be immobilize, including blunt trauma, or a patient with a GCS of not less than 15, patient has no spinal pain or tenderness, patient has no neurological deficit or complaint, patient has no anatomical deformity of the spine, and none of the criteria previously mentioned for spinal mobilization are indicated. Trauma patients that suffer penetrating trauma that may not necessarily require mobilization include those patients that have no numbness, no tingling to extremities, no loss of motor or neuro sensation or function, and none of the criteria that indicate spinal mobilization have been met. Medics should always use good clinical judgment as well as the criteria to determine the need for mobilization. Let's look at the three or more rescuers. One EMS provider can apply manual inline stabilization from either behind the patient or in front of the patient. Once manual stabilization is applied, a properly sized cervical collar can be applied. A long backboard is then placed behind the patient from the side and pressed against the patient. Once the board is in place, manual inline stabilization is maintained until the patient is secured to the long backboard. Two pre-hospital care providers stand on either side of the patient, turn slightly toward the patient. Each provider inserts the hand closest to the patient under the patient's armpit and grasps the nearest handhold of the backboard without moving the patient's shoulders. The other hand grasps a higher handhold on the board. While manual inline stabilization is maintained, the patient and backboard are lowered to the ground. As the patient is lowered to the ground, manual stabilization is maintained through rotation of the hands. Once the patient and board are on the ground, the patient is then secured to the long backboard. When three or more health care providers are not available, two health care providers can achieve immobilization from a standing patient. One health care provider can apply a C collar while the other brings in a backboard. 
The two providers stand on each side of the patient, turn slightly toward the patient. Each provider places the hand closest to the patient, under the patient's armpit, and grasps the nearest handhold on the backboard. The other hand is placed with the palm surface, fingers extended, against the lateral sides of the patient's head and pressed inward toward each other to maintain manual stabilization. The patient is lowered along with the backboard to the ground. The pre-hospital care providers need to work together during this move to ensure maximum manualization of the C-spine. Once the patient and backboard are on the ground, manual inline stabilization is maintained and the patient is secured to the long backboard. Now we're going to talk about how to secure a patient to the backboard. While your third partner has C-spine, you're going to want to secure the torso first with your backboard straps. Starting at the uh, chest, the pelvis, above the knee, and below the knee for a total of four straps. After you've secured the torso, you're going to place two head blocks on either side of the patient's head and secure with two inch tape. Remember to pad any voids if necessary. Once you've secured your patient to the backboard, you're going to need to place them on your stretcher and load them into the ambulance. You should lower the stretcher to a comfortable level for you and your partner's height. Remember that if you lower the stretcher to the lowest position, the farther you, you will have to lift the stretcher. Communicate both with your partner and with your patient to let them know what is about to happen. Tell your patient that you're about to lift them off of the ground and onto your stretcher. Once your patient has been properly placed on the stretcher, you will need to use all of the stretcher restraints, including the shoulder straps, waist straps, and leg straps. Raise the side rails and adjust the backrest and leg rest as necessary. You will need to place the shoulder straps through the top two handles of the backboard. By doing this, you can prevent your patient and yourself from being further injured if you are involved in an accident. Place the stretcher in a loading position. This is any position where the loading wheels meet the vehicle floor height. Push the stretcher forward until the loading wheels are on the patient compartment floor and the safety bar passes the safety hook. This should be verified through visualization and communication. Operator 1 should grasp the stretcher frame at the foot end using the upper or lower handles. Lift the foot end of the stretcher until the weight is off of the latching mechanism. Squeeze and hold the release handle. Operator 2 should stabilize the stretcher by placing their hand on the outer rail. Operator 2 should then grasp the base frame and after the foot end operator has lifted the stretcher and squeezed the release handle, should raise the undercarriage until it stops in the uppermost position and hold it there. Both operators should push the stretcher into the patient compartment and engage the stretcher fastener. Well, we've reviewed the indications on when to mobilize a patient. We've demonstrated the proper technique for a standing takedown, the mobilization. You've also heard from the safety officer on how to properly secure a backboarded patient to the stretcher. Please remember that spinal mobilization is a technique that is often overlooked, but is a very, very important one and limits the liability to our company. I understand there may be incidents where you don't feel that the patient needs to be immobilized, and if they meet the criteria, then that's fine. I would urge you to document thoroughly in your narrative as to your rationale for not immobilizing. This will help me in the QA process uh, to know what your thinking and reasoning was. Be very careful on using terms like cleared C-spine in the field. Know that we are not authorized to clear C-spine in the field. That can only be done by a doctor in the ER with radiological x-rays. Well, that's it for this training webisode. Don't forget to review the material and then take the short quiz after the presentation and I look forward to seeing you next time.